Hey guys, welcome back. This is uh, chapter 1.1, Classifying Matter, Mixtures or Pure Substance. So here we have a nice little schematic. We have this word up here called matter. Matter. Matter is an interesting word. It's essentially a word that means all things. It's just a catch-all phrase. All things. All things are made of matter. So for example, my hands are made of matter. This little stylus pencil is made of matter. The headphones I'm wearing, the glasses, the shirt, the air I'm breathing, all of these things are made of matter. Now, matter is anything that has volume and mass. We're going to talk about those things later. Anything that has volume and mass. Uh, for now, just think of it as stuff. It contains everything. It's the chemistry word for stuff. Um, but we're going to have a more refined definition here in a moment, and that definition is has volume, has mass. Okay? Now, matter can be broken down into pure substances or mixtures. We all know that. In our society, most things are mixtures. Most things contain two or more things put together. For example, the coffee you drink in the morning is most definitely a mixture. How can I be so sure of that? Well, when you make coffee, for sure you have water. And that water, even if it was pure water, let's just say it was pure water, 100% pure, you're going to mix it now with coffee beans that are ground up. And those coffee beans give up their beautiful, wonderful essence. Can you tell I like coffee? They give up their beautiful, wonderful essence to the hot water, and they collect down in a pot that you drink. Now, I personally like black coffee because I'm a purist. But if you want to put a little bit of milk and sugar into your coffee, you've made an even bigger mixture with more components. Okay? Um, and mixtures now come in two varieties. There's a homogeneous mixture. And a, <laughs> I circled the heterogeneous. Pardon me. There's homogeneous, which is over here, and heterogeneous, which is right there. Now, homogeneous means contains the same thing throughout. Oh, pardon me. Let me say that a little differently. It contains a uniform mixture throughout. So no matter where you're looking in a homogeneous mixture, it appears to be the same. The best example I can give for, to you for that for that uh, example is vanilla ice cream. Not the good stuff. Not the stuff with the vanilla beans like laced through it. Just a cheap vanilla standard ice cream. You cut it in half. All you see is this white ice cream. That's it. Uh, tomato soup. You know, it's just tomato soup everywhere. Nothing special going on in there. No, I'm not talking about fancy tomato soup. Just cheap Campbell's tomato soup. Um, these are all examples of a homogeneous mixture. The air you're breathing right now is a homogeneous mixture. Uh, heterogeneous now is a lot different. You can see differences throughout the mixture. Uh, in, a home, in a heterogeneous mixture, a great example is chicken noodle soup or a chocolate chip cookie. Uh, what does that mean? Well, if you look at a chocolate chip cookie, you look over here, you'll find some dough. You look over there, you'll find a chocolate chip. You look down here, you find a little burnt crust. Heterogeneous. It's different depending on where you're looking. Um, coins, in a, coins in water, as they're showing here. Coins in water. Well, it's a heterogeneous mixture. Up here, you see a little bit of water. Down here, you're touching coins. It's different no matter where you look. Okay? Um, great example of a heterogeneous mixture. Uh, chicken noodle soup is my favorite. Um, chocolate chip cookie, as I said before. There's numerous examples of heterogeneous mixtures. Um, just kind of look around your house, try to find some for yourself. Now, a pure substance, those, those are different. Now, they're pure. They contain only one type of atom. Those would be elements. Or one type of compound. For example, water. And we're going to get into what those words mean in a few minutes. But real quick, uh, element contains one type of atom. We're going to talk a lot more about atoms. And compounds contain more than one type of atom. So, for example, copper is just the atom copper. It's an element. Uh, water is H2O, so water is a compound because it has two different types, two or more different types of atoms, okay? So that's how that works, all right? We're going to learn a lot more about this. So here are some of the definitions that I was talking about. A mixture can be broadly classified as a mixture, or pardon me, a matter can be broadly classified as a mixture or a pure substance. In the mixture category, you have homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures. Not a problem. In the pure substance category, you have elements and compounds. That's what we kind of broke down a little bit. Now, let's take a little U-try or a little, little study check. Identify each of the following as a pure substance or a mixture. So remember, a mixture contains two or more different things. 
A pure substance contains only one thing. So, for example, a compound or an element. So, let's try. Pasta and tomato sauce. What a wonderful mixture. And that is heterogeneous. Very good. I hope you're doing these along with me. It's very important that you do these along with me. Aluminum foil. Okay. Well, now aluminum is an element. Now, you may not have known that because we haven't really talked much about it yet. But it is isn't definitely an element. So, this is a pure substance. This is a mixture up here. Helium. Well, go to the party store, get some helium balloons. Helium-filled balloons, excuse me. Helium is also an element, so helium is a pure substance. Now, air. Air is a homogeneous mixture. It's a homogeneous mixture. Now, air is made up of a bunch of gases. Most abundant is nitrogen. Second most abundant is oxygen. And then down the line is uh, water, carbon dioxide, argon, a bunch of other stuff. But the two, com the two prevalent components in air is oxygen and nitrogen. Mixture is a combination of two or more substances. So that's what a mixture is known as. A mixture can be separated into its different components, depending on how you treat it. Okay? You can easily separate some mixtures. Some mixtures are almost impossible to separate but they all can be separated eventually. A homogeneous mixture. Composition is the same throughout. Write that down in your notes. You have to know these definitions. Very important. A heterogeneous mixture is one whose composition is not uniform. So an example of homogeneous is probably, say, your shampoo or, say, a nice cup of coffee without cream. No sugar either. Black. That's the way to drink coffee, people. If not, you don't really like coffee. You like cream and sugar. I'm kidding. Uh, heterogeneous is not uniform, but it varies throughout. So what does that mean? Well, for example, chicken noodle soup, noodle over here, piece of chicken over here, a carrot over there, some onions down here, broth, different wherever you look. That's a heterogeneous mixture. All right, you guys try. Identify the following as a homogeneous or a heterogeneous mixture. All right. Let's start with a hot fudge sundae. Can you tell I like food? I like to eat. Hot fudge sundae. Well, is that a homogeneous or a heterogeneous? It's homogeneous, right? Homogeneous. Well, think of, oh, did I just say that? That's completely wrong. I'm so sorry. Let's try, let me try that again, folks. Let me try that one more time. Uh, hot fudge sundae is most definitely a heterogeneous. Why is it heterogeneous? Well, because... No matter where you look, you, you might find something different. Here you'll find some hot fudge. On top you might find a cherry. Down here is some beautiful uh, chocolate ice cream. Down here is maybe some more uh, peanut sprinkles. Over here is some candy sprinkles. Depends on where you're looking, you might find something different. So this is not uniform throughout. This is a heterogeneous mixture. Shampoo. Now, shampoo is usually homogeneous. Depends on the brand. I know some people have the fancy uh, shampoos with like oatmeal or something mixed into it. Yeah, I, there's some weird shampoos out there. Uh, sorry if you use them. I'm not calling you weird. Um, those are hetero. But now most shampoos are, are you squeeze them out of the bottle and it's uniform and it's a homogeneous. Okay? So shampoos are homogeneous. Sugar water. Well, if you take sugar, dissolve it into water, you know that the sugar completely spreads itself out into the solution and making a nice homogeneous solution. Homogeneous. Ah, my favorite, peach pie. Now, if you haven't had a peach pie, do yourself a favor, go out and get one, or better yet, make one for yourself. They're delicious, especially with ice cream. Ice cream, vanilla ice cream, a homogeneous mixture, wonderful flavor. Peach pie, well, there's some crust over here, there's some peach over here, there's some gelatinized sugar over there, beautiful stuff. Most definitely a heterogeneous mixture. Heterogeneous mixture. So how'd you do on that? I'm sorry about the little mistake I made at the first one. Hot fudge sundae is most definitely hetero, not homogeneous. Pure substance. Pure substance is matter that is made of one type of substance. One type of substance. An element. Element is the simplest type of matter. It is basically what all other matter is built with, or these things called uh, elements. They are made of one type of atom. Now, we don't know what an atom is yet. As we know, it is a more of a vague topic. We're going to specifically discuss atoms later. But for now, 
an element is something that contains only one type of atom. For example, gold. Gold that you is refined and sold as what's called bullion grade gold, 99.99%. Um, that is pure gold. That everywhere you look inside that gold coin, that is 100% pure gold. It's one atom of gold here, an atom of gold here, atom of gold here. It's all just atoms of gold. Same thing for pure silver. Same thing for pure anything. It's this that one type of atom. An atom is the smallest unit of matter that keeps its unique characteristics. Now, this is important. It keeps its unique characteristics. So, for example, a gold atom, a unique characteristic, is it's kind of yellow colored. Silver is a different atom, and it's not gold. How do I know? Well, gold is yellow. Silver is gray. They're different colors, so that's two characteristics. That's, or sorry, one characteristic that's completely different. All right? Pretty neat, huh? Now, a compound is a pure substance that is made of two or more elements that are chemically joined together. We're going to learn more about how they're joined together, but they're chemically joined together. Okay? Now, again, we're going to learn a lot more about atoms. We're going to learn a lot more about compounds. But for now, keep these definitions in mind because they are very, very valuable as we move forward. You try. Are the following elements or pure compounds? Gold. Well, you may not know this, but gold is an element, and that is its atomic symbol. AU. Gold. So gold is an element. Water. Well, there's the formula for water. H2O. So there's two different atoms there. This is a compound. Sugar. C6H12O6. Well, there's definitely more than one kind of com uh, atom there, right? There's carbon, oxygen, hydrogen. So this is a compound. Carbon. Well, carbon has just got one letter there, so it's just one atom. Atom, the element is C. So this is an element. Titanium. Well, titanium is also an element. It has only one type of atom. That's called titanium atoms. They have the unique characteristics of titanium. And carbon has unique characteristics of carbon. It's only one type of atom. Pretty neat, huh? Sorry, guys, my light just kind of turned off there. Let me turn it back on. All right, elements, compounds, and the periodic table. So we're going to stop the video now because section 1.1 is now over. And we'll pick it up and record section 1.2. All right, guys, good luck and good chemistry.